For millennia, Cores has been a thorn in the side of developers across the globe. For something lauded as straightforward and simple, it trips up the very best of us to this day. <clears throat> Excuse me. Of course it's a course on course. 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 A course on what? Cores is a security mechanism designed to provoke rude comments on Hacker News and limit access to resources on a server when those resources are requested by a browser, which means, yes, your app. Before letting your cores induced rage boil over, hang on to these two points. First, before cores, you couldn't do any cross-site requests. You had to create a server-side endpoint that did it for you. Second, implementing cores is much more straightforward than most people think. The short version of cores is that when browser-based JavaScript makes a fetch request to another origin, the server on the other end needs to let the browser know that this request is A-OK. -okay. The server does that by providing headers specific to cores. Cores headers all start with access control. Here's some examples you might have come across in the wild. An origin in HTTP refers to the combination of these three elements, the scheme, the host, and the port. Subdomains are treated as separate origins from their parent domain. Let's look at an example. Say my app is running on localhost. That's our origin. In my app, I make a fetch call to get a random fact from this URL. Now the server's origin is here. Astute observers may notice that localhost is not the same as quaint bandicoot. Indeed, we are attempting to fetch a resource across origins or cross origin for short. One might even say we're hoping to share resources across origins or cross origin resource sharing. For this to work, the server must explicitly allow this to happen. It must opt in. It does so by returning a set of magical headers that tell the browser whether or not this request should be allowed to continue. Okay, the, the headers are not magical, but they are headers. Let's continue the example. Our server is not currently set up to support cores, and thus the request is rejected harder than me at prom. By modifying the server's response like so, we can allow this request to complete. At this point, it's worth noting that cores is entirely enforced by the browser. Using curl or even a server-side request has no bearing on cores. There is a common misconception that this makes cores moot as it can simply be circumvented by ignoring the core's specific headers returned by a server. But there is more than meets the eye. If you make a request from curl, you'd already have the information, like a session token, you'd need to make a successful request, or else the request would fail. Leveraging the browser to make that request introduces access to information, like cookies, you might not already have. And what an attacker really wants is for the victim's browser to relinquish some of the information it has about the victim. I know what you're thinking. Secure cookies, HTTP only cookies. They can't be read by any old JavaScript. So what's the issue? The browser should just make the cores request and not send any of the cookies. Smart cookie. That's what it does. Browsers already don't send cookies with cores requests. Access control allow origin star allows any website to load your resources, but prevents cookies from being sent. As a broad rule, this header alone eliminates the entire category of CSRF vulnerabilities nearly entirely. It still has to be opted into, however, and here's why. There are still millions of systems that use something other than cookies for authentication. 
Oh yeah, makes sense. Many printers and home routers do not bother with cookie-based sessions because it is assumed that if you can make a connection to the service, you are already in the network. Yeah, fair enough. Thus, a malicious website might make a fetch request to 192.168.0.24. That happens to be your printer. No, not my printer. Now it has access to your printer to do all kinds of things. Seems not ideal. Maybe not so bad, but you know. However, what if it were able to access the printer's log, log. of all of the things you've printed? Oh boy. This, this is why cores. The same goes for many web servers that software starts on your computer. Like most web standards, there is a long tail of edge cases and esoteric details, but these days you can think of cores simply. For the most part, cores is completely static, and one can just send these two headers in response to any request. Using Convex, we can create an API with HTTP routes like this. At this point, you might recognize that we'll run into an issue here if we attempt to hit this API from an arbitrary client. So let's just add some headers to make it work. Ta-da! But I have a little gift for you. To make this easier for you and so that you never have to think about cores again, I've written a wrapper to automatically support cores for any of your convex routes. Here it is in action. And just like that, you can write a robust, scalable API with full cores support in a matter of minutes. Happy coding. Of course it's a cores on course. 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 A course on what?